Welcome back everyone to some more factoring videos. We are going to talk to you about what a difference of squares is, how to spot it, and how it factors. If you look here, we're calling this a difference of squares because this is a perfect square. It is x times x, and this is a perfect square. It is 3 times 3. And the word difference in math means subtract. So I have subtraction between two terms, and they are perfect squares. So this is a difference of squares. If you were to think of this in trinomial form, one of the terms is missing. In fact, it's the x term. So you could think of this as x squared plus 0x's minus 9. And we're just going to work this first one only out, pretending this was a trinomial. And when we factor a trinomial with a equals 1 shortcut, we look a times c would be negative 9. And we want numbers that multiply to give us negative 9. And remember, they need to add to give us b. And in this case, because we had no b term to begin with, same as no x's, b is really 0 here. So we want numbers that multiply to give us negative 9 and add to give us 0. And it turns out, if you think for a minute and look at this, you will get that the numbers are 3 and negative 3. 3 times negative 3 will give you negative 9. And 3 plus negative 3, in other words, 3 minus 3, will give you 0. So according to our a equals 1 shortcut, that means that this would factor as x plus 3, using the positive 3, and x minus 3. So you notice we get the same terms. It's not the same factor, right? But we get x and 3 in each factor, one with addition, one with subtraction. Okay, we call this when we have the same terms with opposite operation in between add and subtract, we call these conjugates. That's the technical math term for this. And so we get the difference of squares will factor into conjugates. So we get x plus 3 and x minus 3. Now, what you'll notice is that each of the conjugates has x as its first term, and you'll notice x times x is the x squared. And you'll notice that 3 and 3 gives us 9. And if we were to distribute these conjugates, you'll notice that the inside terms would give us a 3x, and the outside terms would give us a negative 3x, and 3x minus 3x gives us 0x's, which is why we end up with no middle term and have a difference of squares. So a difference of squares will always factor into conjugates. Let's look at a few more examples of these. So we have 4x squared minus 1. So I want to see this is a perfect square, something times itself, and this is a perfect square, something times itself, with minus in between. So this is a difference of squares. This is, 4x squared is actually 2x times 2x, in other words, 2x all squared. And 1 is obviously 1 times itself. So I have 2x squared, and I have 1 squared. So my factors are conjugates involving 2x and 1. In other words, I end up with 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1 as the factored form of this 4x squared minus 1. Looking at several more here, I have a perfect square here. This is x times x, and a perfect square here. This is 5 times 5 with subtract in the middle. So in other words, I have x squared minus 5 squared. So I will have conjugate factors with x and 5, x plus 5 and x minus 5 as our answer for how to factor difference of squares x squared minus 25. Next one here I have 9x squared which is a perfect square and 1 which is a perfect square. So this first term here we want to see as 3x times 3x, in other words 3x all squared, and 1 squared gives us 1. So our factors will be conjugates with 3x and 1 included, so we will get 3x plus 1 and 3x minus 1 for our factors. For the third one here, uh, 2 is not a perfect square, 72 is not a perfect square either, but remember when we do any factoring, we always look for the greatest common factor first. So if I look and see that a greatest common factor of 2 can be pulled out, 
then I notice I would have x squared, which is now a perfect square, minus 36, which is also a perfect square. So we say what squared will give us x squared, and what squared will give us 36, and those terms go in our factors. So I keep my GCF, my conjugates that I will get. This is x times x. This is 6 times 6. And because they need to be conjugates, one will be add and one will be subtract. It doesn't matter if we put the x plus 6 first or the x minus 6 first, as long as we have all of these factors. The order does not matter. All right, let's look at this one. 49x squared minus 64. These are perfect squares. This term here is going to be 7x times 7x. And this term here is 8 times 8. So those are the terms that go in my conjugate factors. I will get 7x in the front of each factor. I will get 8 in the back of each factor. One will be add, one will be subtract, and that is our factored solution there. Looking at this next one, 48x squared minus 27. 48 is not a perfect square, 49 was. 27 is not a perfect square either, but if we look at these and we see these have a common factor, I could pull out a common factor of 3, leaving us with 16x squared, and that's a perfect square, minus 9, that is also a perfect square. So if we think about what times itself gives us 16x squared, 4x times 4x would give us 16x squared. What times itself gives us 9, 3 times 3 gives us 9, so our conjugate factors will have 4x plus 3, 4x minus 3, and we won't forget to put our GCF that we factored out at the beginning. Over here on this last one, 4x squared minus 100. Uh, these are perfect squares. 4x squared is a perfect squared. 100 is a perfect square. But don't forget to look for GCF first. What we should do is notice that these are actually both divisible by 4, and we should pull the 4 out first. So we have 4 times the quantity x squared minus 25. And then going from there, we should note that this is x times x. We will get an x in each factor. This is 5 times 5, so we will get a 5 in each factor and one of them will have x plus 5, one will have x minus 5. Be careful with your greatest common factors. Don't forget those. Okay, so this is factoring difference of squares. Hopefully you see the pattern. We have another video with some more examples. Uh, some of them are about this level of difficulty, and some are a little bit more challenging. So if you're looking for more of these, check out our next example video on difference of squares. We'll see you then.